What is up, people? Welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. Today, we're going to be talking about the one and only Connor Bedard. As you all know, he's a very special talent with some very unique attributes. Actually, I thought everything had already been said about Bedard, so I didn't bother to make a video on him, but I got a few requests, so here it is. As usual, I'm going to break down his stats and compare him to other players from this season and previous seasons. I'll grade all of his tools and we're also going to go through a ton of clips so you can better understand what type of player he is. And finally, I'm going to give you an NHL player comparison. Uh, I will also usually give you an approximate ranking, but in this case, it's clear to everyone's eyes that he's the number one player in his draft. So without further ado, let's get this started. So starting with the stats here, he scored 71 goals and 72 assists for 143 points in 57 games this season making him obviously the first on the Regina Pats and first in the WHL by almost 40 points. He also had 20 points in 7 playoff games and 23 points in 7 games at the U20s. So basically, everywhere he goes, he destroys the opposition. The stats definitely match the skills. It's not like last year where Shane Wright only had 30 goals and 90 points and people were trying to find every justification possible to explain why the production wasn't really there but the skills were still elite, which they weren't. Same goes for Slavkowski, where the skills were evident, but the production in Liga didn't match the skills, and to an even greater extent, where Cooley had every tool in the world to be a dynamic, dominant player, but had a good, not great season. In the case of Bedard, there's no question marks, there's no interrogation left unanswered. He has elite to generational production and elite to generational skills to match it. And everybody saw it coming from a mile away when he had 14 points in 7 games at the U18s in his draft minus 2 season and had almost 2 points per game in his very limited 15 games in the WHL. He followed that up with 51 goals and 100 points in his draft minus 1 season, making him the most productive 16-year-old in the WHL in the last 30 years or so. If I apply the same filters as usual, which are 17 to 18 years old, draft eligible with a minimum of 10 games played, He's third on that list behind two guys in the 80s. One who was a 5'6 and didn't play in the NHL and Rob Brown who had a 115 point season in 68 games with Pittsburgh in 88-89. But anyways, the best production in the last 35 years or so. If we compare with players like McDavid and Crosby, McDavid had 120 points in 47 games giving him 2.5 points per game in the OHL being second best ever only behind Lindros and being marginally better than Bedard at 2.51. On Crosby's side, it's a little different because the QMJHL is a different beast with players like Pat Lafontaine at 3.34 points per game and Lemieux at a crazy 4 points per game. But anyhow, Crosby at 2.71 points per game in the Q. So in the end, all this to say that Bedard's production is right up there with the very best of our era. Let's go take a look at his tools now. All right, so for the grades, it's pretty easy here. We could say that all of his attributes are elite or somewhere close to that and be done with it, but I'm still going to give a grade to all of his tools, even though it's pretty close to something like that. The skating is not elite. The compete is not elite. The hockey sense doesn't strike me as elite, but I wouldn't spend too much time arguing with someone telling me that it is. Other than that, his playmaking is elite, same goes for his puck skills as explained in my top 10 playmaker video. His shot is a 10 and it's his best tools followed very closely by his puck skills in my opinion. It's the first time I ever give a 10 for a shooting attribute. I didn't even give it to Matthews back, back in 2016, which in hindsight is ridiculous, but I was a bit clueless of the level of play in the Swiss League even though he scored 24 goals in 36 games which indicated that he was on another level when it came to scoring. But yeah, just like Matthews, Bedard has a devastating shot and will most likely become one of the premier goal scorer in the league. People, if you enjoy the content I'm making, please take the time to like and subscribe. It helps me grow the channel and reach more people who could be interested in this type of content. So please and thank you. So one of the things that I think we don't hear enough about Bedard is his compete level. He is a very high-end competitor, offensively at least. His defense is just like his forecheck, is a work in progress, but with his work ethic and his competitive mind, I'm very confident that he will be just fine in those departments. I don't think he's ever going to be a selkie type of player and his game will always be around creating offense, but I don't think he'll be a liability. Even if he has a smaller frame at 5'10", he's not afraid of contact and sometimes even invites contact to make his plays. He plays a lot between the dotted lines and will make his way to the net night after night. One thing that I really love about his game and why I think he's a high-end competitor is that 
you will attack full force, full speed through traffic every night. There are many players who prefer playing around the traffic and skate around player or pass the puck from the outside in. In Bedard's case, he plays through players, traffic, no traffic, giant defenders, no giant defenders, double teams or not. He's attacking at full pace, full force, through the middle. I love it. There's no fear and no doubt in that guy. Everyone agrees that Bedard is a special player and nobody doubts that he will have a great career, but I've seen some reports saying that his size to skating ratio will prevent him from reaching his ceiling. I don't see how that's possible. Okay, he's not Jack Hughes or McDavid out there. He doesn't have 10-10 mobility in every direction and every facet of what makes a skater a great skater, but I'm not sure he's quite there, but his skating reminds me a bit of Kaprizov. It's it's powerful, it's agile, it's fast, but it's also in the way he uses it. He's a wizard in transition, he explodes off the board to gain separation, and he can create gaps with two or three strides. He can skate circles around most players, but he uses edges to hide his intentions and cut to the inside. There's really not much to dislike. Would you want a little bit more top speed? Maybe. But would it make him a better player? Again, maybe, but I'm not sold on that. I think that he has everything that he needs from agility to explosion, from speed to balance, he's a high-end skater. But the most important thing about all this is that he plays the game at that speed. Bedard overall, his pace is elite. His skating as a single attribute is a notch under that, but his pace is as good as it gets. When it comes to puck skills, everybody who watched the world saw it, everybody who watched one or two Regina Pats game this season saw it. Because what you get when you watch one game is what you get every single shift with Bedard. Like I said before, his shot is his best attribute and there's not much to debate here. But his stick handling is really not that far behind. I said it in my top 10 shooter and my top 10 playmaker video. He's one of the best, if not the best player I have ever seen one-on-one -on -one or even one-on-two. -on -two. His small cuts, his forehand, backhand, his toe drag are all elite and always precisely timed. His hands doesn't look like the smoothest hands out there, but they're really, really fast and precise. I've never seen a player who can attack defenders straight on and make them miss like he does. I don't think I've ever seen a player who's that good at sliding the puck through defenders' legs and stick and catch it on the other side. He's phenomenal at baiting defenders into poke check or weight transfer and slide the puck through them or simply bring the puck with him somehow while skating through two defenders. His puck skills are unique and he's only getting better from here. I expect him to make people look silly just like McDavid does on a constant basis. Yeah, sometimes McDavid make people look silly with his skating, but sometimes it's just him cutting through three or four players and comes out on the other side with time, space and the puck. I think Bedard has that level of stick handling in himself. It feels a little weird to talk about his playmaking when I just did a video about it last week, but it is what it is. I'm also not gonna include the hockey sense part in this video because I couldn't really find a way to isolate it for a section in the video. The main reason for this is that his hockey sense is pretty much visible in every sphere of his game. I often include hockey sense with playmaking because to me they are very similar. If a player understands how to create space for himself or his teammate or how to manipulate defenders or understand how some schemes will react to what he does or how to get into support position for a teammate without closing space on them or how to jump in and out of pockets for scoring chances and all the many different ways players use to create offense, then it pretty much covers it, at least the offensive part of it. So I might keep going that way unless something strikes me and I know how to put it into words and present it in a video. It doesn't mean that I'm going to stop talking about it or grade it. It's just that for most player, especially instinctual player like Bedard, it manifests itself, it manifests itself in their scoring ability, in the way they create, in the way they read and react to the play. It manifests itself in the puck skills and how they manipulate the players and create misdirection and fakes all over the ice. So in Bedard's case, when we compare his playmaking style to someone, let's say like Carson, you can see a clear contrast in how they approach the game. Carson tends to slow things down and deliberately take on players to create space, while Bedard's style is much more reactive and instinctual. It's like Bedard doesn't come into place with a set plan in mind, he simply reacts to whatever is happening around him. Bedard's playmaking is all about being in the moment and making quick decisions based on his instinct. He has this incredible hockey sense that allows him to read the game in real time, assessing where opponents are, where his teammates are, and finding the best passing lanes possible. 
Instead of relying on predetermined strategies, Bedard trusts his gut to take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of him. What really sets Bedard apart is his adaptability. He doesn't stick to a rigid game plan. He's always ready to adjust his approach based on what's happening on the ice. That flexibility allows him to exploit any gaps or breakdown in the defense, turning unexpected situations into scoring chances. It's like he's constantly scanning the ice looking for any advantage he can take. One of the most exciting things about Berard's playmaking is his creativity. Since he doesn't come in with a specific intention, he has the freedom to experiment and try new things. This unpredictability makes him a nightmare for defender because they can't anticipate what he's going to do next. He's always finding unique ways to create scoring opportunities and keep the opponents on their toes. While Bedard playmaking may seem more reactive, if you will, compared to players like Carson or Mishkov's deliberate approach, both styles have their strengths. Carson's ability to control the game pace and take on defender can be incredibly effective in certain situations. On the other hand, Bedard's instinctual playmaking allows him to make quick and decisive plays that catch the opponents off guard. Overall, Bedard's reactive style combined to his hockey sense, his adaptability, his creativity, makes him a very special player to watch. He brings excitement and unpredictability to every game, you never know what he'll do next, and that's what makes him so captivating on the ice. When it comes to shooting the puck, Bedard has every attribute nailed down. And not only does he have a fantastic shot and a great shooting mechanic, he's also a volume shooter who shoots the puck every chance he gets. He shot on goal 360 times this season, 360 in 57 games. That's 6.3 shots per game. And now, when you add the fact that his shot is violent and powerful, no wonder he scored 71 goals. Something that's very impressive about his shot is how he can release a shot with power and accuracy from basically any position. He can drop the puck into his skate and release it in a fraction of a second. He can shoot it from his heels, he can shoot it from his toes, from way outside his body, when he's falling down or off balance, giving his shot an element of surprise every time he shoots. His release is lightning quick and he can curl drag his shot like no one else outside of Matthews. It's heavy, it's precise, it's quick, it's from anywhere, anywhere, anyhow. He's a very, very versatile shooter and can really surprise goalies with his quick release, giving them very little time to react and adjust. He's an elite dual threat. Obviously, he has a shoot-first mentality, but he can adapt in the blink of an eye and pass it to an open teammate or dangle his way to the net and put it in, just like he did with the golden goal at the U20s. He does have a tendency to shoot too much sometimes when he could just be patient and wait for a better play to develop, but... I'm sure he'll clean up that habit in the NHL, even though patience isn't his strong suit. So what I'm saying is that he's got it all figured out. He has the quick and deceptive release. He's got the angle change with a curl drag or outside cut. His shot is heavy and carries significant force and velocity. He can let it go from basically any position and from anywhere. His shot is very compact and he can easily release it under pressure. He can shoot it precisely from anywhere, even on the goal line. He can shoot it even when everything points to him not being able to shoot it. The versatility and the surprise element of his shot is just unmatched. I think it's clear that he's going to become one of the best goal scorers in the NHL. I don't see him as the next McDavid because I think there's only one copy of McDavid and it's unfair to expect that from any prospect no matter how good they are in junior. McDavid is the most dominant offensive player in the league. Then there's a giant gap and then there's whoever you want to put there. So yeah, I highly doubt he touches that ceiling, but he could certainly be somewhere in that next group. So look, this might sound a little crazy, but I remember watching a player in Vancouver when I was a kid growing up in the 90s. That player became one of my very favorite player ever and the one I most enjoyed watching in my entire life because of his skating, his energy and his scoring ability. And that's exactly what Bedar makes me think of. For people in their 30s and older, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And for the younger ones, treat yourself to some Pavel Bure highlights. Bure was definitely a faster skater than Bedar, but that's who he makes me think of. And if he becomes anything close to Bure, Chicago is in for a treat. But it's not like they're not used to exceptional players anyway, right? All right, so that's it for Bedar. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.